going on everybody welcome back to another video you guys saw the title you saw the thumbnail but real quick before we get into that this is the third video in a row that we've said this but uh another milestone has been hit that's 300 subs we're closing it on 400 again thank you guys so much it's just crazy man just just thank you guys so much but yeah now with that being said let's hop on into the video all right so today we're going to be talking about everything we wish we knew about the Sauron X's before we got them because despite how awesome these bikes are they're not perfect and there's actually quite a few flaws that they have that we want to tell everybody about in case you're looking at getting one of these or maybe you just got one and haven't really had the chance to ride it yet we've had these things for about two months now almost three months and we have put them through their paces we've both laid them over i don't even know how many times a piece and uh yeah today we're going to be talking about everything we wish we knew before we bought a sir on x all right so the first point here that we want to cover is basically just how cheap the plastics are on this bike now i'm sure you guys have heard everyone talk about the back fenders that's obvious the front fender is obvious but not so obvious i broke this off that's why it's not on here i ran into a bunch of stuff basically and it just ended up snapping off it was pretty funny actually but when i talk about cheap plastics i really am talking about the uh, ignition plate right here so as you guys can see um something doesn't look right here this thing is hanging off and all my wires are out that's what it's supposed to look like i think you guys can see it's just supposed to be screwed in there but because the plastics are so cheap and we installed the bac 4000 we accidentally over tightened these screws and therefore after hitting some jarring bumps i don't know if you guys can tell down there but the screws are still screwed in and there's broken plastic under it it literally just ripped the plastic out of these holes you cannot over tighten these bolts or this will just break all right and for me the number one biggest problem that i have with this thing is that sometimes most of the time when I turn my bike off and I turn it back on, that's the first time I've turned it off since we got down here. And I just turned it back on. Let's see if it does it. We'll put the kickstand up, make sure. Okay, now the bike wants to go. Okay, so you saw me turn it off and turn it back on. And now I'm giving it throttle. The bike will not engage. Kickstand like, stand is up. Everything is in order. Like Everything should be working just as fine, but yeah, it, it just doesn't engage. If this happens to you and your bike doesn't start up immediately, don't freak out. Just turn the breaker off and on a couple times and you'll be good to go. All right, so the next thing that we want to talk about is how much weight matters on these things. Now, Dakota here weighs about 150 pounds roughly. I weigh 170 to 180 pounds roughly. I haven't weighed myself in forever. I honestly have no idea, but I know I weigh more than him. And although my bike is tuned and everything with the BAC 4000, his acceleration is still faster than mine because he weighs so much less. Like 20 pounds, you know, on a regular gas bike is not very much, but 20 pounds on these things that only weigh 112 pounds is a massive difference. Now, of course, if he rides my bike, he can beat me when I'm on his bike. Like the, my bike is faster with the BAC 4000, but the 20 pound difference makes my bike, even with the BAC 4000, slower than his bike. So keep in mind that depending on how much you weigh, you might want to look into getting a Talaria Sting or something like that or just looking at upgrading mods right when you get this thing to make it fit a larger person better. All right, so the next thing that I wanted to talk about is this plank of wood seat right here. <laughs> Dude, this thing sucks so bad. I highly, highly suggest getting a new seat. I haven't done it yet. Uh, I don't know why. I just, I haven't yet, but... There's a lot of different options. Trying to figure yeah, out... Yeah, really trying to figure out what the best option is, but as of right now, I am riding on a plank of wood, and I highly suggest anyone to upgrade the seat immediately. We've had a bunch of friends come over and ride these things, and the first thing that everybody says after riding it for five minutes is how bad the seat is. This is not really up for debate. The seat, the stock seat, is not good on these bikes. <laughs> That stick right there. I don't feel comfortable with you right next to me. Wow. Kids actually trash this place, bro. All right, so the next thing that we want to point out is how bad the brakes are on these things. Now, I know everybody's talked about how bad the brakes are on these things, but we just really wanted to let you guys know that these are truly mountain bike brakes, and uh, this thing is basically an electric dirt bike. So, especially once you cut the green governor wire and this thing can go over 35 miles an hour, mountain bike brakes basically do not cut it anymore. Obviously, we're both still running them for right now, trying to figure out what the best option for upgrades is. But dude, these brakes are so bad. Like, I don't know if you could tell, but you about slid down that hill. Yeah, like, no, you I... walk brakes on both, and it just does not stop the bike, man. These brakes are bad. We need new pads. Please let us know what we should get below. But just listen to how squeaky and just, I mean, it's just. 
Yeah. You can make a song with your brakes, dude. <laughs> like, it is so bad. So, if you get one of these things and you cut the wire, which pretty much everybody cuts the wire, you're going to need some upgraded brake pads. Well, we're trying to get out of here. And, uh, 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 I wish you guys could see this shit. Bro. Uh. <laughs> that was a little easier than I thought it was going to be. Alright, so hopefully you guys can hear me okay right now. I'm sure there's a lot of wind noise. I've still yet to pick up a mic. You guys left a lot of suggestions for good mics, so thank you so much for that. But the next thing I wanted to talk about is how terrible my throttle is. I've tried to explain this so many times. The code has tried to explain this to you guys so many times as well. But my throttle is fully just done for on this bike. So, look, this right here is full throttle. If I go past that, Nothing happens. That is all dead space. Full throttle is literally right here. Like, it's so little back. It is just ridiculous. And it is so annoying how much dead space there is because it basically makes driving the bike like a challenge. Like, you got to figure out exactly where full throttle is at so the bike will actually go as fast as it's supposed to. This is so annoying, and this is by far the most annoying thing that I've had to deal with on this bike. So be aware if you get one of these bikes, basically a hit or miss with the throttle because my buddy Dakota over here, his throttle is just how a regular dirt bike should be, but mine is just so bad, man. It is so annoying, and just be aware of bad throttles on these bikes. Before we get into the last thing we wish we knew about the Sauron X, there's a hill climb down the road, and we'll catch you guys at the top. This is the worst part right here, but I wonder. Oh yeah! Oh no! 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 <laughs> oh, we were close! We were close! It's all good though. We're chilling. I know. I can't. Ah! Oh. Dude, these tires suck. We gotta get these tires so bad. to this pretty dope spot here there's a sick view but the last thing we wanted to talk about is pretty much just how rough on these things we are and we didn't know that we were going to be this rough on them basically like obviously they're electric dirt bikes you can put them through their paces and stuff like that but we've only had the bikes for about three months so far we already need a new set of tires he needs a new set of bars a new head clamp right here i need a new set of bars a new head clamp I've already managed to break this. Both of my fenders are broken off. He's destroyed his seat. Basically what I'm getting at here is just, we had no idea that we were gonna be this hard on these things, but we wanna let you guys know if you do get one, there's not really much to worry about. These things are super, super durable, super tough. Pretty much have gone through everything we've put them through so far without any hiccups. The worst thing that's happened is a piece of broken plastic here or there. Pretty much all we're getting at is just know you're gonna wreck the bike a few times you're gonna put the bike through its paces but don't worry man this thing is built tough it is awesome and uh you guys are gonna love one of these things even though it does have flaws all the flaws we talked about this is by far the most fun purchase i've made in the past i don't even know how long both of us forever made. probably yeah like these things are so much fun and in our opinion even though they have all these flaws they are still worth every penny fun
just made it back down the hill climb here but yeah that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one that is everything you need to know about a suron x before you buy a suron x or if you already have one and you haven't really ridden it that's just everything you need to be aware of before you really start riding it if you can think of anything else leave it down in the comments below once again thank you guys so much for 300 almost 400 subscribers it's absolutely crazy we have a bunch of sick mods coming in very soon so make sure you guys stay tuned for that but yeah like we said that's all for this one. If you guys like this video, drop a like and subscribe. Peace out. We'll see you in the next one.